But let's go back to what everybody's talking about. Because in the same, what, 10-day period or two-week period that AEW loses their biggest name attraction, SmackDown gives us John Cena and The Rock. Both together, and Pat McAfee, for that matter, he's got a following. I mean, is Taylor Swift next? What about, you know, can they get the Super Bowl to do their halftime show? If the writers are on strike, I'm sure they can get a lot of people. But it, it's more than ever, it's kind of obvious now that, especially with the, the new ownership group or whatever, they got deep pockets and they've got access to the biggest names in the business and i mean for the people who didn't see the program smackdown from september 15th and pat mcafee came out it was in denver they were near the building shooting something for his football job right what does he do for the football folks well he has a podcast but i don't know how much of a crossover audience there is between the podcast and who's going to watch wrestling to see him do whatever he does. Well, but I'm I'm saying they were nearby. He was doing his podcast or something with the the football, and that's why he had the rock on, and they were close to SmackDown, so they got them on the show as well. There, boom. They came over and made an appearance. And who's the heel announcer now? They switch him around so much. Was it Corey Graves? Yeah. Uh, that says <laughs> McAfee had a nine figure bank account, a double digit IQ. That's a, that's a, that's a way to to slap a guy in the fucking face, but put him over at the same time where he can't complain. And McAfee does a hell of a baby face promo. He's glib and he's got the gift of gab, as they say. And he put the show and the fans over and everything. Welcome to SmackDown. And then we get Austin Theory music. The guy that Brian Alvarez, uh, Uncle Dave's little delinquent nephew says needs to get with the times is interacting with pat mcafee and vince mcmahon and john cena and goddamn rock and way yeah he better change that shit up theory he's in trouble here and this this was the best promo i've heard of austin theory sounding like he sh austin theory should sound like because remember we said with Cena, the thing where he was, it was like he was intimidated. He, he let Cena fucking bowl over him in that. Remember what was it? Just a couple or three months ago. Well, a little longer than that. It was WrestleMania. Was it? Well, how goddamn, how long was that? It may, June, July, um, okay. Five months ago. Point is he, he looked like he was more comfortable here. He was more natural. He didn't sound like he was, either reciting anything or like he was, you know, intimidated. He mocked and derided McAfee. Part of it may be, you know, with Theory being in the ring with Cena, I can understand that would be intimidating a young guy who's gotten a business, obviously, because he was a wrestling fan, right? McAfee's a big deal, but maybe not in Austin Theory's world to where he was as intimidated. And he's had more experience, and he's getting more comfortable. But he wasn't like a a uh, bashful young wrestling fan in the ring, like here, like he was with Cena. You, do you do you get what I'm talking about? Do you smell what I'm cooking? I don't disagree with you. That's what I'm trying to say: is that he's progressing, he's getting more comfortable, he's doing this right, and then. You know, uh, boom, 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 McAfee says, well, you may think it's your show, but this is the people's show. And the rock music hits, and the people lose their fucking minds. Just their fucking minds. And out he comes, and he just milked it. And I, what was it, five minutes? To just the entrance and the chants, and it got louder. And the response, and he's just, Without making him do anything, he's making him do everything. The Rock is the, who they didn't have any idea they were going to get for the price of their ticket, and he's the biggest star still in the wrestling business, even if he's not in the wrestling business. But I, th I think it was five minutes before he had to speak, and then there was 
some kind of long audio mute uh, of the crowd at, at right at that point, and then Theory tried to start berating Rock or whatever. Rock just says, shut your bitch ass up, and pff, they blew again. And he, you know, he say, apparently you don't know how this shit works here. He took his jacket off. He did finally the Rock has come back. Theory tried to do Rock's, it shut up, you know, the shut up thing. It doesn't matter what you think. And Rock said it does matter. And then he scolded him. And he had the people eating out of his fucking hand. And if you want to see me beat this jabroni's ass, give me a hell yeah. There's a nod to Austin. And then he just told him off and got the crowd. And this couldn't obviously wasn't cleared with Fox ahead of time. And I don't know if the rock just said, fuck it. I'm going to make it up as I go along. But he had half the crowd chant your Ann and the other half the crowd chant asshole and then reversed it and the fucking guy on the the button is trying to mute asshole and it's just it's all over the place and you can't hear for long stretches and then you hear asshole but they bleep your ran it was so and, stupid to do it it ruined the enjoyment of watching it when it's just mute but, the whole time but i'm wondering did did the rock think that cuz they used to do that on USA. They can do it on Fox. Did did they not know this ahead of time? What? Who? Because it went on for a while. And if I, that's I wrote the the Rock has hijacked the Fox network. He's the he could tell have told those people now take all your clothes off and throw them in the ring on top of Austin Theory and they would have done it. It was amazing. But the <laughs> so after they got all of the muting out of the way and settled back down to it. He told Theory he was going to whip him in three seconds, and as he started counting it down, Theory suckers him, and Rock turns it around with a spine buster and gives him the people's elbow, and the place comes apart. And then McAfee does the people's elbow, and the place comes apart. And then, and I mean, it was... 20 minutes long and it was almost too quick except for the I would have loved to have heard the unheralded or uncensored audio but goddamn, it's it's like Rock just said I'm just gonna do a 30 minute fucking show out here for everybody and he could, ran the whole fucking thing he's amazing The Rock is so lame Oh come that on! there are very I... few words to describe how lame he is what? And what? how he is so lame. He's out there because there's a writer's strike. I'm sure that didn't stop one of his little stooges like Gewurz writing every word that he went out there to say. Because we've seen before, The Rock's not necessarily Mr. Improv out there. But they make theory look like that, shit. That... They make theory look like shit. It's one thing if you're going to take the move from The Rock. He then takes it from McAfee. McAfee's not at that level. Come on. That's ridiculous. And... I know everyone likes The Rock. Well, I shouldn't say that. I know the fans there were surprised and reacting to it. But they, it, were, they were throwing him their children. No, they weren't. Oh, come on. When's the last time you heard him scream that loud for one of these schmucks that's on a show every week? It's about the surprise. If all of a sudden The Undertaker said, fuck it, I'm going to run to the ring, they would explode. Yes, because it's The Undertaker. Exactly. That doesn't mean it's good. Isn't it? That's the point of being over. It doesn't have to be good. Well, that's what I said. I'm not saying The Rock isn't over, and I'm not saying the people didn't react to it. I'm saying it was lame as fuck. I loved it because it was it was a star working people and getting them to respond. We don't see that anymore. All we see is these fucking robot part-time actors being wandered to the ring with fucking material they recite i don't disagree with that and actually that is the one thing that really hit me during this watching the rock and again i'm i think this guy's so lame and watching a reaction and then you think about who's the next most over guy on that show la night not counting cena la not counting cena the other guy not counting cena because he's another special guest really he's, even he's, well, he's, for, he's, he's back for a few but back, i see where you're going LA full time it's the same way of talking 
not necessarily above the audience, but treating yourself like a star and then they do, as opposed to like, all these like Johnny Bashfuls that come out there. Johnny Bashful. And they get on the mic and you're like, why should I care? This guy doesn't even care enough about himself. I think that is one of the keys to LA Knight. You hear people always complain, not always, but you've heard the complaint. He's too much like a guy from the Attitude Era. If you're talking about top guys from the Attitude Era, that is the way to present yourself in this kind of setting that works. Yeah. Because nobody wants to fucking see you if you're a schmo. 